It's time for our children's story this morning. And it's kind of hard being separated from each other, but I'm sure if I said these words to you, you would know immediately what kind of game I'm talking about. If I say, I spy with my little eye something that is white and fuzzy. Hmm. Now, it's different, of course, when we're gathered here together and I could say that and you would look around the room and wonder what I'm talking about and try and guess. But you're in your own rooms, your own living rooms, you're with your family. But we all know how to play that game, don't we? How to, we've played it before, we don't need to have it explained. But it's, it's kind of a guessing game, isn't it, right? Where we're given clues to help us. Right? Something that is white and fuzzy. Hmm. Or we're given a color or a way to describe it. There's another game like that. Have you ever played the game 20 Questions? Where one person thinks of something. It can be anything. It can be a person, an animal, an object. Pretty much anything. And then the other person has 20 questions that they can ask, but the answer, they have to phrase the question so that the answer can only be yes or no. So if I was being the person that was playing 20 questions and I guessed something, that I had something in my mind that you were going to guess, and so you would go and you would ask your first question and you might say, is it a person? And I would say, no. Is it an animal? And I would say, no. And then you would think of it for a second, you would go, is it an object? And I would say, yes. Hmm. Is the object in the room with us? And I would say, yes. You kind of get the idea. You go along and you try and narrow it down so you can guess within 20 questions what that person has thought of. We do like games, don't we? Especially games that make us guess or use our knowledge. I don't know if you've ever seen the game show Jeopardy on TV. Perhaps your parents or your grandparents watch it. It's been running a long time, but there are three players who are gathered across the stage, each on their little podium like this. And there is a large board that has six categories on it. And at the top of each category, there's a clue about the answers that will be found, or the questions, rather, that will be part of that category. And so the player picks the category, and then the question level, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. And then when they pick that, a question is given to them. And they have to try and answer that question in the form of a question, rather. So, what is, they would say, or who is. And so it's all based on descriptions and categories and words that are used to describe something without actually giving away the answer. We actually play a lot of games where we try and guess something based on clues, don't we? Because they're fun. One of the reasons that they're fun is because that's the way our minds work. Right? We like those little clues. And we use things that we know or understand to describe other things that we don't really understand or that are, that are too complicated. For example, love. Love is a hard word to describe. And so if I said, describe to me the word love, I don't really understand it. What are some of the things you could say? Perhaps we could describe what it feels like when our mothers or our parents hug us. Or when we haven't seen our grandparents for a long time, like now, and we know that we're going to see them, or we see them on, online, on Facebook or FaceTime, on Skype. And that feeling we get. And so we're describing love, but we're using things that we understand. In our reading today from 1 Peter, we heard a number of descriptions about Jesus and about what it means to have faith and what it means to be the church. 
Jesus is described as spiritual milk and that we are newborn babies. Jesus is described as a cornerstone, the stone that that starts a building. But that some builders, they rejected the stone. They said, no, that stone isn't worthy. That isn't a good stone. And they threw it away. And so people that reject that stone, that say, no, I don't want that stone, being Jesus, that they can stumble or trip over a stone. And those who choose Jesus, they build spiritual houses. Now, when they say that Jesus is the cornerstone, he really isn't a stone, is he? But he's important, right? He's that very first stone that allows us to build a good house on top of it. And Jesus really isn't milk, is he? But we know all about stones. We know that we can build things with stones. We know how strong they are. We also know that we could bang our shins against them and hurt ourselves. We could stub our toes on them. We can trip over them. We know that milk makes us healthy and strong and that newborn babies, that's all they have is milk. Sometimes it's easier for us to describe things using words or things that we already understand because it helps us to remember. It helps us to understand things that we have trouble understanding. Can you pray after me this morning? Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Help us to understand Jesus better using the things we already know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, the song that we're about to sing right now, it uses another object or thing that we know, a lighthouse. And Jesus is sometimes compared to a lighthouse, and he's compared to a lighthouse in this song. Now, a lighthouse is usually right on the, on the edge of land, on top of a cliff, or at the end of a pile of rocks that stick out into the sea and it stands tall and straight and it has a a big light at the top that revolves around and ships at sea they can see it for miles that light and it helps them to know where they are it helps them to know where there are trouble spots right where there are rocks or reefs or things that can hurt their ship or even sink them our praise song My Lighthouse.